Nigeria's Second Republic President, Alhaji Shehu Shagari, who was just turned 90, says he's satisfied with President Goodluck Jonathan's style of leadership and his achievements so far. The elder statesman said he will continue to pray for the president's success. Among those present at his birthday celebration were President Goodluck Jonathan and former leaders Ibrahim Babangida, Abdul Salami Abubakar, and Yakubu Gawan. <laughs> Very happy to say that our successes have done so well that we are very, very proud of almost each and every one of them, and particularly the present, the present leader who has brought this idea here of bringing us together again and also to express his, his, his views about the whole situation in the country and the situation in the past and what we hope he hopes for the hope for the future. And we, and we believe that his example has been followed by others who have succeeded him. And we are so proud that our successes are doing very, very, very good service to our country. And we are proud of them. So we thank them, and particularly the present president, who is always aware of people who have served this country, people who have assisted him, and those who have tried to assist him. And in an earlier message sent to Alhaji Shehu Shagari, the president prayed that God will continue to bless him with good health and long life. He said in a statement, I join your family, friends, and well wishes to thank Almighty Allah for his continued guidance, protection, and provision for you in the past 90 years of a life of forthrightness and outstanding leadership with which he has blessed you. He hoped that his administration can continue to count on Alhaji Shagari's solidarity and support in the pursuit of national transformation efforts. President Jonathan prayed that God will preserve the life of the former president as he gives himself in service to the nation. The Kano State Police Commissioner seems to have a lot in his hands as he parades some political thugs and those accused of stealing some permanent voters' cards. Mr. Ibrahim Idris said a female was among the 23 suspects arrested for the political clash in Dawakin Kudu local government area of Kano State, northwest Nigeria, which left one person dead. The commissioner also confirmed the arrest of five people suspected of stealing over 1,000 PVCs out of which about 300 have been recovered. We've discovered that, you know, where they are, uh, what do you call it, where they were sharing this, uh, giving the, these PVCs to individuals, distributing these uh, uh, PVCs to individual voters. A commotion developed there. And because in the course of that commotion, people just packed some of these PVCs and took their heels. Obviously, this, uh, based on this intelligence, we moved in and five suspects have been arrested. We are going to take them to court, obviously. There is no doubt about that. We have so far recovered, I think, over four, I mean, how many? 300 and something PVCs. Yeah. And we have, as a balance, 400 and something. That 402 missing. And that's why you see we are now, we are, I mean, we are delaying the, I mean, we are trying to follow up to see whether we can recover all these PVCs. But as you have observed, we are, we, are, we are taking them to court. To serve as a deterrent to other people that may like to be involved in this kind of activity. 
Elections may have been rescheduled, but governance and the actualization of government promises to the people will not stop. This is according to the APC candidate and incumbent governor of Ogun State, Ibikunle Amosun, when he flagged off the second phase of his campaigns in Imeko Afon, local government area of the state today. Governor Amosun inspected work at the construction site of bridges in two communities designed to ease commuting in the area and promised that the project will be completed. It's a new phase of political campaigns made possible by the postponed general elections. And as customary for Governor Ibikunle Amosu, he takes his team to Imekoa for local government area to encourage the people. On his way, he stops first in Afon, where a new bridge is being constructed. And also in Oyo to inspect a similar project. So people can now take it for granted and know that the road is true, it's possible. They don't have to wait for one another. Even two cars cannot pass at the same time. And what we are trying to do, we want to widen it so much so that generators yet unborn, they will not have anything to do with touching this bridge. At the rally ground, the deputy director of the Amosu campaign organization, Mr. B.C. Adegbui, stressed the need to sustain the tempo while an elder in the community pledges the people's support. The essence of this is to re-energize and reawaken and then mobilize our people of the need for them to sustain the tempo never to be disappointed by the unexpected shift because we are cutting them for victory and still we will still win resoundingly. We believe that we have been touched here but that if he has a second chance he will touch us more. Meanwhile, Governor Mosley reminds the people of the importance of the PVCs. We will not be going behind the scene to say they want to buy our cars. Please don't sell your PVC. We are going to make sure that all of us collect our PVC. When we collect such PVC, please don't sell it to anybody. That is our weapon. The campaign train is currently moving to Remo North and Ikena local government areas of the state. After a series of protests and consultations with their management, health workers under the aegis of the Joint Negotiation Council of Laotech Teaching Hospital, Oshobo Oshun State, have embarked on an indefinite strike. A visit to the hospital revealed reduced activities of workers as the usually busy areas in the hospital were deserted. The health workers, comprising about five unions, had last week threatened to commence an industrial action this week if their demands for what they termed their rights were not addressed. Meanwhile, the chief medical director says the matter is being handled at the appropriate quarters. The chairman of Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, Dr. Sam Amadi, has advised electricity distribution companies to take advantage of its embedded generation and independent electricity policy to boost power supply in the country. Addressing a gathering in Abuja, Dr. Amadi said the policy provides an opportunity for distribution companies to procure power for customers who can pay slightly higher than what is obtainable to get what he described as 24-hour power supply. Key players in the power sector and government officials at a forum to discuss ways of ensuring that consumers of electricity are protected through the rights reforms and legislations. The recent increase in the multi-year electricity tariff order received sharp criticism from electricity operators. They say one of the consequences is the reduction of its workforce and a shortfall in revenue generation. The current hike in tariff price underscores the principle of fair play as the differential prices from one disco to another also constitutes a disadvantage to market players in terms of competitive sales. Presently, the steel industries are working on a very low profit margin of less than one naira per kg, and this cannot sustain a seven to eight uh, naira differences in prices among competitive companies. 
but while how to increase energy supply to industrial and commercial consumers seem to be the urgent challenge still confronting the sector, officials of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission believe that embedded and independent distribution of electricity is key to addressing this. NEC has provided the embedded generation regulation to allow for IPPs to embed power in the distribution area without going to transmission. Since the owners took over, we have impressed on them the need to procure more power through the embedded generation model. And I'm happy to announce that some of the discourse are about awarding contracts for the production of 10, 20 megawatts power that will be embedded in the network to serve ring face clusters like industrial clusters. The vision of ensuring that electricity consumers' rights are protected is what officials of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission promise to do at all times. They hope to achieve this feat through sound policies and legislations. When the news at 10 returns, federal government establishes nine new universities. Do stay with us.